Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to take just a few minutes and talk about this new little GPS unit that I've been testing. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. If you've been around the channel for any length of time at all, you'll know that I almost always run a GPS unit with my Raspberry Pis. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have a real-time clock built in, so we need something to provide an accurate date and time for us when we're in the field. Now, you can do that by either adding a real-time clock module to your Raspberry Pi, or do like I prefer, and that's to add a GPS unit. Now, this GPS, I've been using it for, I don't know, 18 months, maybe two years, and I really like this GPS unit. It's small, it's compact, and for the most part, it just works. However, I did run into an issue with it this past field day, and I did a video on that. I'll leave a link to that video right up at the top. But the problem came in when I was on a Pi 4, I was using the GPS, everything was great, and then I plugged up a USB thumb drive to a USB 3 port on the Raspberry Pi. Well, that USB 3 communication uh, between the thumb drive and the port gave off enough RFI that it completely wiped out my GPS. So I finally figured that out, and honestly, I just went back to using USB 2 devices instead of using any USB 3 devices. And that's kind of uh, been a workaround for the last several months or so. However, recently Jack, KD5CS, sent me an Amazon gift card and a link to this other GPS. And I'm going to have to say that this may become my new standard for GPS. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below, but it's inexpensive coming in at less than 20 bucks, and it, you can use it to solve the USB 3 RFI issue on the Raspberry Pi. So give me just a couple of minutes to hook this up to the Raspberry Pi, and let me show you what I have found during my tests. Okay, so we've moved over to the Raspberry Pi, or actually a couple of Raspberry Pis, so that I could show you a comparison between these two GPS units. Uh, if you'll notice right up at the top of the screen, this one says uh, 817, and the 817 has the GPS unit, the small little white unit that I've been using for a couple of years now, connected up to it. Then, let me go ahead and move over to my 891. You can see that is indicated right up here in the top right-hand corner. The 891 has the new GPS connected to it. So, now, these are sitting side-by-side, side, so there should be virtually zero difference in anything inside my environment to be affecting these. But let's take a look at this. I'm going to run back to the uh, old one for a second. So this is using that small little white GPS unit. And look at the number over here of satellites that it has. That's about seven satellites right now. It's varying a little bit as some of them come in and out uh, of view for the GPS. But seven or eight satellites. Let's go back and compare that to the new one. Look at the number that the new one has. It's got quite a few more satellites that it can see and get a signal from than the old GPS unit. Now, let me take a moment and show you one other thing. I'm going to swap over. This application I'm running now is called CGPS. I'm going to swap over to an application called XGPS. XGPS is kind of cool because it gives us uh, basically a prettier picture of the other information you were just looking at. The sky view here gives us a bit more information, uh, graphical information about the quality of each connection. You'll see some of those are just uh, gray squares or gray circles. Those are the weakest uh, satellites. The red circles indicate a little bit better, but not by much. 
the yellow indicates uh, a little bit better signal than the red circles. And if we had any here, green would indicate a very good signal to the satellites. So again, this is the old GPS here. And remember, these guys are sitting side by side. Now, let's go take a look at that new GPS unit. Here's the same data coming off of the new GPS. Notice how many more green dots we have in the satellite view. Quite a few more. This is indicating that the new GPS unit that Jack was kind enough uh, to send us over a gift card for has a much better receiver in that GPS unit. Now, the next thing I want to do, uh, both of these tests so far have been without a USB 3 drive connected to the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and connect up a USB 3 device so that we can see how that affects this new GPS unit. Okay, so now I have the USB 3 thumb drive plugged into a USB 3 port. Again, I've left the same data on the screen so that you could kind of see what was going on. And the GPS is currently about two feet away from the, uh, the Raspberry Pi and the uh, GPS port. Now, one thing I did do is I did wrap the cable, the USB cable for the GPS uh, through a ferrite bead uh, several times, uh, just trying to give it every advantage that we could. Now, could I do the same thing with the old one? Maybe. But even without doing any of that, this newer GPS uh, just has a better receiver to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over uh, to where the GPS is connected up to the Pi, and I am actually going to set the GPS on top of the Raspberry Pi itself. Now, we should see some loss of quality there, and you can see that I've got about uh, maybe two or three satellites that I can still see. They're kind of coming and going, but I still have a lock. If we look back on this screen, you'll see that I still have a 3D fix on, uh, on the satellites. So that's letting me know that I can still pull time and I can still pull my grid square or latitude and longitude. And that's literally with the GPS unit sitting almost on top of the USB 3 port. So I've got to say, this is probably one of the best units that I have tested out that was less than 20 bucks. Again, I'll leave links to this down in the description below so you can pick one up as well if you would like to. Now, the only thing negative I can say about this new GPS, if you've been using the older GPS, you're familiar with and accustomed to that green flashing light that gives us uh, a visual indicator that the GPS has a lock. This new GPS unit doesn't have any such light. So we uh, really can't look at it and visually verify that it has a lock on the GPS satellites. However, uh, if we just open up an application like CGPS or XGPS, we can see that it has definitely got a lock on the satellites. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There's my pick for the best budget GPS unit. I hope you guys find this helpful. We will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.